I was yearning for their love because I haven't healed abandonment through my dad. So. Yeah, I date my dad too. <laughs> Not literally. <laughs> Not literally. <laughs> but yeah. No, but you do. In so many ways, you tracked it. It's just, it's amazing how it works. I started crying because I was mm. like, oh my God, women are the most cool thing ever. Like, yeah. Women are goddesses. Superhumans. Giving birth and having children is like our highest purpose and the most beautiful thing we can do. And mm -hmm. holy sh yes, this is something I want. Welcome to 8020. I'm Shanina Shaik and I'm here with, of course, Georgia Sinclair. And we are at Spring Place. We're filming in beautiful Beverly Hills. And it's just us today. We thought we wanted to sit on the couch and talk to you all and reflect and talk about the year ahead. We've got a lot of things going ahead that's going to be really exciting. But We've been through a lot last year. We did. Yeah. Yeah. And we had our first great season. We're in season two now. And I thought it'd be great that we can like sit here and reflect on what we learned through that process of last year. Yep. And offer some advice and just so you guys can get to know us even more as well. Let's chat about life, really. Yep. Yeah. Let's have a chat. Let's have a chat. Love Island. I yeah. love it. <laughs> you know, let's go for a chat. Yeah, let's, let's go I for like a chat. Um, no, I feel like this podcast was born out of a time that was really challenging for both of us in our lives, mm. respectively. Yeah. And I don't feel like we ever would have come up with this podcast or the 8020 concept if we hadn't gone through some shit in 2023, you know? Absolutely. I think we touched on the topic a lot. And for me, my lesson going into this year, um, when it's bad, it's bad. But on the other side, it becomes good. You just don't see it yet. Right. There's growth. And what I've learned is going through the really tough, bad times where you feel quite lonely, it's for a lesson and it creates strength and growth. And it's so hard to go through it and we refuse it as well. Mm. We kind of like back out of it so many times. And I saw a clip recently and I told you this uh, with Angelina Jolie um, and she was asked in the interview, What's your advice for someone that's going through a really bad issue, like something really challenging in their life? And she said, go deep into it. Mm. Go through it, feel the emotions, sit with it and deal with it. Because if you don't, it's going to come back. It's going to yeah. pop up until you deal with it and heal it. Um, so you can avoid it at all costs, but it's always going to come back for you. <laughs> Yeah, and I feel like both you and I using different modalities and I want to dive really into deeply into what those are Let's today. Okay. Let's go deep. <laughs> um, you know, we did. I think that was it was such a transformative year even though it was tough for both of us mm. because we did especially in relation to actually both our careers and our personal lives. We went through a lot. We yeah. did. We, we grabbed the bull by the horns <sighs> Yes, and um, we discovered some really amazing tools which, you know, I want to – I want to share those with you guys. Yeah, share them. Yeah. Okay. So, what's number one? No, Georgia. <laughs> number one is oh god, I, I'm I'm so excited to share this, but I also feel like people are gonna be like, whoa, you know, just like in context where we were. I just had a baby, and I, I've talked about this like one of our first episodes on the pod, um, the podcast, dealing with postpartum depression. Didn't know I was dealing with it. Yeah. I was at Georgia's house probably almost every day. Yeah. Georgia was dealing with, I think, a transition in her career, yep. but also trying to find a better source of what what you're about and, like, what you want to do for work as well. I wasn't living authentically. No. I really wasn't. And, like, and when you don't live authentically, your life gets derailed very quickly because I feel like the universe or whatever the higher power is that you believe in is trying to steer you back onto that course of authenticity. Mm. I just wasn't being bloody honest with myself about yeah. what – what I truly wanted, um, I was releasing music that I wasn't in love with. I was playing shows that didn't really align with me. I was traveling when I didn't want to travel. I was staying home when I should have been going out and like, you know, expanding myself and meeting mm. new people and that kind of thing. And I mm. just feel like life, you know, life derailed me so that I could rebuild myself. Um, and with saying that, she had the opportunities to – go to work mm -hmm. in some aspect and make money. Mm -hmm. But 
you she chose not to as well because yeah. there was something so negative or felt like just not right in your inner being to do that. It. You went against it and yeah. it's, that's so brave and it's hard as well because I'm on the sidelines and seeing your best friend in tears and crying but she's like but you saw like there's something better and bigger going on and I have to stick through this and it's so brave to be like I'm not doing this even though I'll, it's going to pay my rent for this month. Yeah. You know? That's yeah. hard. It was hard. It, was, it wasn't just rent, it's a mortgage. So it's like, <laughs> Sorry, mortgage. Yeah, yes. so it's even a little bit scarier because, yeah. you know, like I've worked so hard to get a roof over my head and then when you're, you know, saying no to to checks because you're like, shit, that just everything in me doesn't want to do this. Mm. And, you know, and it could potentially cost you your house. It didn't, thank God. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, it's, it's a big – but I feel like that was such a huge test. Mm. Um, and I'm just so grateful to have had access to the tools and friendships such as yours that gave me the strength to actually say no and, you know, take a risk. Yes. And I feel like you and I were doing that at exactly the same time in different ways. Like there were things that were popping up for you that weren't aligning either. So many things, guys. Yeah. So many things. Yeah. I, one of my... One of my worst years, I would say. And for me, it makes me upset because I have this beautiful baby boy. He's mm. such a good boy He's and just so amazing and just every and a happy, happy baby. And I just want to be my best for him mentally, physically, and um, and just enjoying the the time of motherhood as well. Mm. Not taking it for granted, but I enjoyed it. Like I, you know, he brought me so much peace in so many ways. Like that's the only thing it was like also getting like, and also like Georgia being my number one big supporter as well. But like, that was the only thing that was, yeah, bringing me peace. But I was being tested in every category of my life. You were, you in really everything. were, and I kind of was angry as well at the universe in some way or the, what was happening spiritually around me because I was like, I just had a baby. Like, why are you testing me? Yeah. During give this, me a break. Give me a yeah, break. Like, yeah. you know, I work so hard and I do my best and I'm always trying, you know, I with everything that I do. But I was just like, why am I being tested so much right now? And please give me a break because yeah. I'm not able to handle this, especially when I found out dealing with depression like you, I think anyone that deals with depression, you're not able to make decisions. No, you're not. You're, you're you not don't have clarity. You don't have clarity. You're yeah. not in the right mind to make decisions. So, and I'm trying to make the biggest decisions of my life because with my career, mm. I wanted to pivot with that. Um, I have a new manager, and that was a big shift for me as well. Huge decision. Yeah, it's hard. It's, yeah, you know, it's really big decisions. Um, just work, obviously we're just having a baby. Yeah. I wasn't working. Yeah. And that the first time in my life, I was just like, I don't know what to do. Especially was, knowing you because like you are such a, and we've done a lot of work on this, mm. especially recently, but like you and I have very similar programming in that we feel like we can't rely on anybody. Yeah. And that no matter what, even if we have a person in our lives saying, it's okay, you can rely on me. We don't trust that. No. So we've always, like, you You're know what I mean? Like, mm, no. And, like, I think we're getting a lot better there. But, like, yeah. but, you know, so when you enter a period of your life, like, you, um, you know, post having Xi and me, you know, not wanting to take these jobs that just didn't align with me. Yeah. Um, it's really bloody scary because you're like, shit, like, I can't rely on anybody else. I have to, I have to be working. I have to be taking these checks, you know, even if mm. they, even if they don't align. So yeah. I know how stressful that was for you. Yes. And it was really like, you it was very upset. I was really upset. Yeah. Like, you know, not my best, you know, yeah. I wasn't my best and it got so, it became so dark yeah. and even my relationship, I'll be honest, it wasn't, it was not good. Yeah, because it it, it really it just does ex go yeah. into it rolls into the other areas of your life and you can't help it. Well, I believe in this, and this is another thing that I learned. If you don't love yourself, you're not willing. You're not in the position. Sorry, you're not in the position to love anybody else. Or right. Be in a relationship. That's I just. You can. You can try. You can and exist in it. You can exist in it and yeah. try, and it'll be back and forth, but. Until you're like at peace with yourself and love you for who you are and understand like what you should and shouldn't deal with, but also what you're deserving of, mm. I agree. like you have to, you have to love yourself first. Yeah, and 
I wasn't in a position of loving myself. And I think. Me either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just. Yeah. Also relationships with you. Like. Yeah. It, yeah. Finding yourself. Yep. Just low self-worth, I think. Yeah. For at least the first half of last year. Like until we started 8020, I think I just kind of lost myself. Like I was sort yeah, of like. Yourself. I, I was just like, what am I doing? You know, I'm like. Twiddling your thumbs. Twiddling my thumbs. I just sort of felt like I was like waiting to die. That sounds really dramatic, but that's yeah. kind of what it felt like. It's like I, I was just, I was existing, not living. And you're kind of like, is this my life? This yeah. is what I worked for? Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's a terrible feeling. Terrible. Because you're like, I worked so hard for the last, and, and for me, my DJ career has been like nearly 15 years now. It's like, mm. I've worked so hard for the last 15 years. Is that it? Like, is this where it ends? Like, what's next? And also, I must say, like, the stigma about in your industry as well, the idea of, like, women don't have, is not dominant in your field at all. No, no, and then no. they're frowned upon. And mm. it's such bullshit. I yeah, just I'm still treated like shit. Yeah, it's just <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. It's just like, why, oh, in, we're in 2024. Yeah. Like, we're in this, like, why are we doing this? Yeah. No, in this time and era. There's still not you know? a DJ set that I play where some, smart ass doesn't say to me oh wow you're actually DJing I'm like I would fucking well hope so <laughs> at this point like honestly yeah no it's um that was annoying for me to see it's just like the lack of opportunities because you're a female yeah and that that's added to your stress as well yeah it did yeah. for sure but I do feel like you know something came to me recently in in one of these processes that we will get into it mm. um that was really really powerful and it's not just you said before like in order to to be a great partner in a relationship you have to really love yourself something else that really came to me was that I think you also need to create your own safety mm -hmm. within your body within your life within yeah. your environment um but I think it's I think it's not in the way that like I've always lived my life in that you know I have to be super independent I have to pay my bills like mm. that actually didn't feel safe that felt like it coming from a place of desperation. Yes. Whereas now, like, that's where it really shifted my – I still think being independent is, like, um, is super important, but, like, it, it's shifted my view on where that should come from. I see. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like um, – I feel like – I feel like it's a really positive thing now to create safety for yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Relying, relying on yourself – yeah, it's also. I think the independence of relying on yourself and knowing that you got this. Yeah. But it's also okay to lean into other people. Yes. You know, it takes time. Yeah. But I don't think trust. I don't think you can feel safe within a relationship if you don't create safety for yourself. That was the lesson that I got. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Do I you agree. feel like when things got really bad for you mm. that you slipped into a victim mentality at any point? Mm. I think the victim mentality maybe helped me in some way. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Because it got to a place um, with my relationship where things happened and I was like, and excuse my French, <laughs> like why the fuck does this keep happening to me? Mm. I, I know I'm a good person. Yeah. I'm very loving. I'm very caring. I'm fun. Yep. I'm hardworking. But there's something wrong mm. with me. Yep. But you thought it was you. You're like, why does this keep happening to me? Yeah. It's everybody else's fault. You were like, there must be something wrong with me. Well, and sometimes we always like, <laughs> I believe I was right. But like yeah. sometimes we're like, oh, he's, this so-and-so sucks and this so-and-so sucks. But then I'm like, but there's something, I could look at it that way. And there was times, but there was something that went like, wait a second. This always happens around me. There's something with me why I'm allowing this to happen. Right. So there's something wrong, like, I'm taking responsibility. So you're like, I'm the common denominator. Here. I'm the common denominator. Yeah. Why does this keep happening to me? Maybe because I'm allowing it to happen. Because mm. I don't love myself enough. Right. Or I don't, I'm not, I'm not getting something. Yeah. I haven't figured something out and healed something. So yeah, it had to get really, really bad where I was just so, so fed up, so sad, so depressed, where I was just desperate for happiness. And something positive in my life because it was so bad. And this was in the middle of the year. Like yeah. everyone's in Europe on, you know, on the yachts and in yeah. Positano and having, and I'm, you know, baby and at home. And I'm like, that's when I decided, um, it kind of fell into my, like my lap when I was mm. with you when this happened. One yep. of our friends, um, her partner, 
um, we went out for drinks one night. It was um, our friend's birthday party. Mm -hmm. And one of our girlfriends wanted to stay over at George's house. And she's like, I want to stay over because my boyfriend's going away and I just don't want to be alone in the house right now. And we're like, sure, go sleep over. Fun. Yeah. Great. Three in the bed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Little one said. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was like, sure. You know, like, cool. Yeah. Um, and then we started talking about what her partner was doing. And she said, um, he's going to Hoffman. Hoffman Institute and I go what is that and she goes oh, they take your phone away it's a deep therapy session for a week and it's so life-changing um and it's going to be really important blah 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 she looked at me and she's like Shanina I think it would be really great for you to you know get into this because she'd already been herself she's already her been herself went, right yeah 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 she'd be really great for you to try it this out and I go what is it about and she said it's based on negative love patterns that we um we learn or taught um, through our parents, through our life. And <laughs> just that negative love patterns. I was like, and I was going through this segment in my life where I'm like, something's wrong with me. What do I do? Like I was in therapy at the time too. And it, I, it wasn't feeding me so much mm. in some, so many ways, but, um, but I, what didn't you feel like resonated for you with, with traditional therapy? What was the difference? Like someone on the couch taught like me talk. I think I you could be my therapist. I could have been paying you, babe. I mean, I think we do that for each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where someone's on the other side and go, how do you feel about that? And just saying, yeah, I be, like just giving you validation yeah. that you're not crazy. Yeah, like, I feel like cool. shit. And you're like, yeah. Yes. The therapist is like, yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. You're right. Yeah. And you should. <laughs> and maybe giving you an idea of like what you can do. And I'm like. I'm paying how much money for just to getting short what, validation like to say I'm not crazy when my mom's <laughs> like, you're not crazy or yeah. yes, you are upset or you are dealing with this and your yeah. best friend's like, yes, this is what's happening and you should do it like this. I could, you know. Same thing. Doesn't, it, yeah, it didn't work for me. It's not to say therapists aren't great and there aren't great no. therapists out there. But exactly. for you, you just felt like I'm not getting a lot. In my, yeah. For my experience, it wasn't working for me um, yeah. at, during that time and even through the podcast, I learned, I think Nazanin, you know, she's a mm. transformational life coach. I was like, I would like a life coach. And that's how I felt. And I think that would work for me. Yeah. I was saying therapist is like terrible. I've had a great therapist before. Um, everyone knows I've been married before. And uh, my partner and, um, sorry, my ex-husband and I, we went to marriage therapists. And we learned, I learned a lot yeah. from that. So he was a good one. Yeah. But I would prefer, I think, a life coach. But what I would prefer is... I would highly recommend is was if you can the investment of Hoffman yeah it's therapy that you will have for a lifetime and the tools that you can just bring on into your life but also for others um so I signed up I was at your house yep really upset that night I remember I yep. was I signed up and it was a really long wait yes um because <laughs> they're very popular and they're amazing at what they do um luckily um, and it was during the summer holiday season. So my friends, we made phone calls and I desperately needed it. So I got in earlier than what I, you know, early, much earlier and I loved it and I needed it. It was like the universe placed it in my lap again. It was, it was meant to be yeah. because we also went to a birthday party the next day and we had a friend there that made a call for us that made it happen too. So it was just a very weird set of events. Yeah. Um, so tell us like, I don't know how much you can share about the Hoffman process. Mm. It is a process, right? It's called the process. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what's it like? Um, it's quite scary. Obviously, it's like going to school for the first time, you know, you don't know what to expect. Um, you receive homework leading up to going in. Okay. You I hate homework, but. <laughs> I was like, like, I'm a bit of a teacher's pet, I guess. I was like, oh, nerd. I'm like, I Did you turn homework. up with like the apple on the first day? I was like, all like... done. <laughs> <laughs> homework, all done. Um, no, I was, I think I, I was so desperate to feel good. Yeah. You were and done to learn. I was like, I'm ready. Yeah. So I was leaning into it. Um, with all my might and hard work and dedication to myself. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I leaned into it, did the homework and we're assigned teachers and they know all about you. But it's, it is, it's like going into to school for the first time and there's different ages, people from different cultures. Um, no one knows what you do for work, which is okay. beautiful. I think that's really amazing. Yeah. So 
Um, and everyone's going in with different problems and scenarios and issues and challenges in their life. Some even less than mine and some like much harder and difficult and deep rooted than mine. Well, I think um, it's like all relative, isn't it? Like, you know. Well, yeah. If you look at it, it's all based around patterns. And patterns are, for example, things like I've learned a pattern. I can be honest with this. And it's hard, um, especially with my career, um, neg uh, negative self-talk. That's yeah. a pattern I picked up. I feel like that's for a lot of, especially lot of, women. Especially women. <laughs> yeah. So negative talk, um, self-worth, like unworthy. Mm. A lot that came up for me is I'm not good enough. Yeah, I get that one Which too. is a, it's a big one for people because yeah. when we learn this through Hoffman, it's a, it's a, through the process, it's a popular one. Like I'm not good enough. I'm not loved. Yeah. Um, I have to, I have to work for love. Yeah. Um, another one for me, I have to give love to get love. Yep. Um, and we learned this and I made amazing friends through the, pro like people that are, you know, I don't think I'll ever stop on the stream and be like, oh, I want to get to know this person. It yeah. really created that space for me to meet just different, you know, characters and different ages as well. And I was so grateful for it. They take your phone away and it's a scary thing. Yeah. Um, I remember before you went in, yeah. you were like, cause obviously like, most of your business is posting on social media because that's the reality of like, you know, anybody with a public profile, even this podcast, like the whole thing is posting on social media. Mm -hmm. So the idea of not having your phone for the week was yeah. really, it gave you a lot of anxiety before you went in because yes. you're like, who the hell is going to run my Instagram? Like, is, is life going to stop? Is my yeah. business going to stop? Yeah. Um, so when they took your phone away, mm. how did that make you feel? And how did that progress if it progressed throughout the week? I think a lot of people will be like, oh, how did you just go away for a week and you have a baby? Yeah. And one of... Um, yeah, because of course, losing yeah. your phone, you have a child, that's even have that's a another layer. You already yeah. do. And one of, um, one of the, the information that I received from the experts and teachers there is like, this is the best gift that you're going to give your child mm. for his future, for your child, because you're going to heal... So many th things during this process about what you've learned or what you've completely rebelled against um, through um, your parents and the patterns mm. that you've, you know, taken on. And you're going to learn that and understand it. And then you're going to see for the future of your child, like what they're going through and also mm. teach them how to deal with their emotions, how to um, show up and talk about their emotions, yeah. be emotionally available. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it was really important. I was like, okay, I'm doing this for Zai as well, for his future yeah. as well, because I don't want him to end up with my patterns mm. or, and he will in some way, he will, it's going to happen. Inevitably, yeah. Yeah. But I'm able to talk about it with him and understand it yeah. and have the communication um, to discuss that with him and also teach him to talk about his emotions. The one thing that I loved about going there was like every day, wake up, like I'm gonna ask you, how are you feeling? Yeah, oh wow, <laughs> Jesus, I'm not even used to that. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Like I think it's such a, it's just such a, we live in such a conscious space instead mm. of a subconscious space, right? Yes. Like I'm just like focusing on what's going on around me. I haven't even stopped to think about how I feel. Yeah. Right now I feel cracked out on coffee. Um, <laughs> But other than that, I feel pretty happy. How do yeah. you feel? I'm feeling somber a bit. Yeah? Yeah. What's making you feel that way? I'm going through some stuff, guys. No, <laughs> going through some crap in yeah. life. No, somber, but I'm excited. I'm enthusiastic because I'm like starting the new season. So I'm very enthusiastic. Yeah, um, yeah that's where... That's where my head is right now. Okay. Yeah. And obviously I've just been sick. So I'm like. Ugh. Yeah. So you're just feeling like a little bit weak. Physically. But that me describing is so many adjectives and so many ways to describe how you're mm. feeling. When usually, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm good. Good. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah. How are you? But yeah. We got sent a list of so many feelings. Oh, wow. In so many different categories. And I was like, wow, there's so many ways of how we can talk about our feelings and when we talk about our feelings in so many different ways and people have more of an understanding mm. to connect with you and understand what you're going through and yeah. not just being able to be intimate to connect with you and be like, oh, yeah, like, oh, there's somber. So it's like 
you know, they're a little bit off, they're okay, but they're a little bit like yeah. low energy. That's what I get. Rather than being like, yeah, I'm good. So I'm like, all right, well, they're, yeah. Yeah. But I love that you gave me that answer too, mm. because like it made me immediately go, oh shit, I have to check in with you. Like, what's going on? Are you okay? Like, yeah. why do you feel somber? What can I do to help? You know, like, yeah. just and that I honesty. Hope, yeah. And I hope the person on the other end is able to be like, okay, what's going on for you? Mm. And want to, uh, you know, understand that and yeah. get to know and figure that out. That's an, you know, that's an ideal partner or spouse or friend, whatever yeah. it may be, you know, work colleague, whatever it may be. So I loved that idea. So that's something I want to like take into routine um, for my little one as yeah. he ages and talk about his feelings, Yeah. Um, express himself and learn about being able to process your feeling, but to express them out. I think with our, when we go through life, especially for myself, I'm, I'm not a very angry person, but I'm human. I'm going to mm. feel anger, but I don't feel like I can express it mm. because they were like, well, you're crazy. Mm. Or I get like, uh, she's delusional or you're being too much or it's an Ooh, issue. We're told that a lot, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. you kind of like yeah. hold it in. But what happens if you hold it in? It, it just, breaks you down. Yeah. It's like stress and, then it and trauma. And bubbles over. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had like, I'm sure you've had situations like that before. Oh. Me being told I'm too much? Never. <laughs> um, <You're a> diva? <laughs> y- yes, babes, I have. Um, yep, been called a diva too. Um, I know. But no, I, I actually, you said an interesting word then, trauma. It's not an interesting word. It's a word that's thrown around a lot these days. Mm. I actually had a, a conversation with my mother over the, the holiday break mm. um, about trauma because I feel like our generation is in a, a unique position where We've all recognised that we've got this fucked up programming from our parents. Mm -hmm. But, like, that was never a thing for our parents. Mm -hmm. Like, our parents weren't told or or sort of weren't in a generation that recognised trauma, programming, anything like that. So, like, they just picked up whatever from their parents. They did the best they could with us. But it wasn't, like, acknowledged and treated the same way our generation is trying to address it because we don't want to fuck up our kids. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like... And yeah. also, like, the word trauma back then would be like, okay, they're a bit in the loony bin. Yes. Yeah, it was it, frowned upon. Yeah, they would have been it, They would have been stigmatised for, for going to therapy. Oh, yeah. she's in therapy. She's crazy. Yeah, or, she's crazy. Yeah. Um, and then even the idea of talking about trauma is like, oh, but, like, I think today it's, like, it's, it's open yeah. to hearing about trauma and it's like, well, it's normal. Yeah. It's somewhat normal. Do you think people, though, this is something I'm also noticing. Mm. Have we gone a bit too far, though? Like, I think I'm the biggest believer in working on yourself. Yes. But I did notice I got in, I got a little stuck in my healing phase, like, for a minute, you know, where I was like... Problem after problem after problem after problem. Well, I just don't want to... I don't want to face anything because I'm healing, you mm. know? Like, do you think that people lean into that a little bit too much? and or, or do you even think healing is real? Because when we had Flynn on, he's like... You know, you get into your healing phase and step one is, you know, you you recognise what the issue is. Step two, you start, is healing and then, mm. I mean, don't quote me exactly, but check out his Instagram, it's on there. Step three is you realise healing's fake. And <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that could be a pattern too of yeah. someone dealing with something. That could be like, and that's a pl- pattern as well that you could receive from parents or whatever it may mm. be, is playing the victim yeah. or have, getting attention. And it's that's a type a, of avoidance too, perhaps. It's avoidance as well, getting attention. Like there might be things that be triggering you like in as a child or growing up or whatever in your early adolescence is like, for example, um, when I was playing on the soccer field, like my, you know, my mom or dad or wasn't there and, you know, and anything you want to do is like have your mom or significant, you know, like yeah. a parent or cheering someone lo- cheering you on yep. and having that attention that a love it means so much yeah so if you don't have that and as you grow up mm. it's like kind of brings trauma to yourself right yeah it's like I don't have that attention I, no one sees me like they're not there for me yeah so it could be something like that for individual people yeah I'm not sure I'm not there to like I'm not the I'm not a doctor or yeah yeah but expert I- in that God, field. even you just giving that example just gave me such anxiety because I was like, oh, my God, like as a parent, there's so much pressure on you to like show up for your show child up. all the time. Yeah. Because otherwise, like they might be traumatised. But the, And also their own being, their yeah. own unique being, they might take it in a different way, you know. Or might not care about it at all. Exactly. Yeah. And so I, I did a lot of healing through Hoffman. Okay, so walk me through the process. What 
like anything that you can and mm. are comfortable sharing. It's the process is uh, again. I'll just say the process is amazing. You go through so many lows, but in a positive way. You learn so much, so many lows, and they bring you back up. And it's really, but it's really fun as well, and okay. so much fun and so much loving. I you come out of it. They call it the Hoffman High, and you just feel so good about who you are. You learn about your spirit and your spirit is your authentic self. Mm. Because when I say that, when we grow up and we're a child, a baby, we learn things from our parents mm. or we adapt to survive, right? Mm. Because mm. like in the animal kingdom, we have to go with the with the crowd or with, the, you know, yeah. whatever, just to survive food, yep. um, behavior, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And we bring shame upon ourselves as well because it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to tell my mom or dad that this bothers me. And also we're like a child or a baby because I might not get love, care, shelter, food. Yeah. So, so we put the shame upon ourselves. But as we grow and grow, we put shame and shame and like think about all the layers of shame that we bring on and then yeah. all the, the behaviours that we bring on just so we can adapt to our family or like surroundings. So we deal with, and we're, ch we're children. We don't know so much. No. We're still learning. You don't even know what the word trauma is. Exactly. Is yeah. So that's what happens mm. through this life, our life. And our parents, parents got patterns and receive patterns. So like they are not their patterns as well. You are not your patterns. That's right. one thing. You are not your parents. You have to find out who you are, your spirit, your authentic self. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we learn. Yeah. Um, because some people come in there like I'm like I'm an asshole, I'm rude, I'm always angry. But we come into this life as love. Mm. Yeah. Really beautiful. What baby is born angry? Maybe yeah, some, but it's like. taught. That's not <laughs> you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's been taught. Yeah. It's been learned. Like hateful. I'm like, yeah. I don't like this. I'm angry. I'm snobbish. If you want to describe people, some people describe themselves as that. It's like that's that's not you. Mm. We all come with love. It's really, it's positive. Yeah. And so we learn about becoming our spirit, our, you know, coming our authentic self. And then we also learn about what the the choices that we make in our life, which mm. is really important. Okay. And what we do, and all of us does it, is we go into a place of making decision. I'll give you an example. Say, I'll give you an example. Um, in a relationship, mm -hmm. you know, dating a guy you know, doesn't work out, he was an asshole, narcissist, or whatever oh, yeah. it may be. Just all the labels. All the labels. Yeah. Nothing okay. to do with me. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you break up, whatever it is. And then you go into another relationship and then you kind of find out. Yeah. Hang oh, on funny. a second. I'm yeah. playing with the same crap again. <laughs> Even though it was all like all good, but there might be things that you've healed through your other person. But mm. it's like, okay, well, I'm dealing with this again. You break up, you know, that happens, whatever. And then maybe after two years, you think you got it all together. You're mm. like, I'm stronger. No way. You go into another relationship and you're like, holy shit, I think this is some of the same issues I'm yep. dealing with again. And it's because our brain puts us into like a safety mechanism where this is what we learned. This is mm. what we know. And so we're going to keep repeating this because why do we, why should we go into another road or journey? Because we don't know that. Yeah, that's a challenge. Right. Our brain doesn't want to put the energy into something that is the unknown. Right, it's, familiarity is safety. Yeah, yeah, but it's not working for us. No. But what it does, if you choose the other road and make a different choice, what happens? It builds new like brain neurons to make new decisions and positive decisions mm. and learns new things. Yeah. So that's what we have to learn. It's like, well, if you're learning that you keep going to the same relation, it's not working. Mm. Why don't you try something different? Yeah. And go with the nice guy or like, yeah. or go with, you know, whatever it may be. You know what though? I feel like I'm going through this exact thing right now. In what way? Where like I've been dating because I'm single. Yeah. And wow. I've met oh. some, yeah. And I've met some really <laughs> awesome guys yeah. recently. Like great guys. I actually don't have anything bad to say about them except like I feel like even though I'm like, I'm not in a rush at mm. all, which mm. is something that, you know, came for me, came to me recently in one of these modalities we're going to discuss. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I'm for some reason, and I guess it's because, you know, I, I had to chase love from my dad. Um, I feel like 
I'm attracting unavailable men mm-hmm. because that's what my brain recognizes as familiar. Yes. And safe. Makes sense. And it's been like such a process of learning for me because in the past I would have gone, oh, well, I have to fix this. Mm-hmm. I have to fix them. I have to earn their love because like love is only real love if I earn it, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like the process for me has been learning to go, you know what? No, <laughs> I, d- I just have to send them off with love and not fix them because that's not my job. It's not even my right to mm. fix them. I love that you said that. It's not. Yeah. It's not my damn business, you know? like you're not, deser- you, you're not deserving of it. You're deserving. Of someone who's on, in, on the same page as me, right? Yeah. So like – it's but it's really in the past I think I would have taken it really personally I would have been like well, what's wrong with me mm-hmm. like why why aren't why don't they want the same things I want when I want them yeah whereas now I'm just kind of like we're just not on the same page we're not aligned they're bloody great people like yeah. one day they'll make great partners for someone or they won't yeah. um but yeah I think that I think the biggest step forward I've taken is learning how to say no walk away Mm-hmm. You know, just let things be and move yeah. on. I think it's important to to state that no one's perfect. No. No one's perfect, but it's also important that you align yourself with somebody that's willing to be open, to mm. talk, to be emotionally available. Yeah. But then you're going to fight in relationships no matter how, like, you know, amazing the person is. But it's the other person on the other end that's willing to be open to communicate with you. Yes. And to understand you. And if you have great communication and can talk about your feelings – and say and talk about your experience mm. of what it's doing for you and then kind of like work on that and hear that, it really makes a great relationship. And there's just not – no one's holding grudges. Yeah. Everyone's talking about their feelings and understanding each other and not being judged. Mm. You don't want to be with somebody that you feel judged. Yeah. Yeah. You or know, somebody who's giving you lip service. Or lip service. Or don't feel like <laughs> you can able to express yourself. Yeah. Like saying yes, 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 like saying all the right words, but their actions don't match those words. Yeah. I've had that too. Yeah, shutting you down. Yeah. It's the worst place to be in, you yeah. know. Um, so, yeah, that was another, you know, idea or exercise that we learned in Hoffman I'm grateful for. It's like really changed my communication style. Yeah. Um, and that's not just in relationships. It's like friendships, mm-hmm. work whatever it may be, yeah. um, everyday life, just communicating with people. Mm. Um, I noticed a huge shift in you. She noticed a huge shift. Like massive. It was like, was like who I is co- this? <laughs> I actually couldn't believe because, I mean, I only, knew, I only knew what you knew about Hoffman. And you've learned what I've kind of been – you've taken on – what I've been experiencing of or learned, if that so makes sense. Much. Yeah. So much. Yeah. So much of it. Yeah. Like I feel like I've like a quarter been to Hoffman because I'm just around you. <laughs> yeah. No, you have. <laughs> you know and I've I mean? seen I that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's still going. Yeah. Yeah. But like um, it was amazing because I I remember right before you went in, you were super stressed. Yeah. Hope you don't mind me saying we actually had a huge fight. <laughs> we had a huge fight. Yeah, we had a huge fight because yeah. like we were both in a shit place. Yeah. And and it just one night just boiled over for both of us. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it was fucking sad for both of us, I yeah. think. Like it was, wasn't was good. Yeah. And then. Oh, don't worry, 80 still. Up, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, thinking about it. Yeah. And I don't, we'd never had an explosion like that before either. Like it was just sort of like. No. Whoa. No. But and it yeah. was just like. But I had to learn something about myself, you know, to Same. like, to figure that out. And it was positive. Yeah. But Massively. It, so I'm glad that I literally went into Hoffman after that and I was like, oh, shit, like I – that's the community. I have to have that. And I felt so yeah. good. Yeah. And we – yeah, we spoke about it. And oh, I yeah. I understood. Yeah, no, it was – it would needed to happen. But, yeah, you you went into Hoffman right after that and we actually didn't speak for like a couple of days before you went to Hoffman. And then you don't you, speak to it really anyone when you get out as well because you're yeah. just like so – You need to process it. You need to process it. It's, yeah. It's, you're, you come out and you're like – and – we say this is like I've changed, everyone hasn't. So you feel like you're an literally like an alien coming back. And yeah, you're like, people don't get this. I'm in a weird place. Yeah, and like you don't understand because you feel so amazing and great about yourself, and yeah. you've learned so much. You're like, okay, but you also don't want to be like pattern police and also be yeah. like oh, too much let on somebody. Let me tell you what you're doing you, wrong. You, yeah, yeah, let me tell you what yeah. you're doing wrong. This yeah. is what you need to do. Like you don't want to do it so they can understand where you're at so you just don't do that so you need to like they teach you actually to have those a few days to yourself to like get acclimated to the yeah Yeah. to integrate into the into the new world again yeah (laughs) but um but it's amazing like you coming out of there Mm. 
not only did I see a huge shift in you, it definitely rubbed off on me. Yeah. And it rubbed off on other people around you too. It did. Like so clearly. Yeah. But what was like just so amazing is you did come out of there and it was like I love that you said Hoffman high before because it was like you were high. Yeah. In a really good way. Yeah. Like not in like a, you know, I've just been in a cult for a week. Yeah. Uh, way. Because, no, 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 you know, no. like I some people might think this sounds like it's a not cult. a cult. It's not. No. Um, but yeah, it was it was amazing. Like you were just so comfortable in your own skin, mm. sure of yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you went from like rock bottom to shit. I know my self worth. Yes. I know what I want. Yes. And like that for me, seeing you there, I was like, oh my God, Mm -hmm. I'm seeing my best friend happy. Like for the first time this year. Yes. This is awesome. Yeah. You know, I think a big thing for me was, um, my lack of confidence. Yeah. And I've had that issue. And people will probably be like, well, you've like modeled and, you know, yeah. I think people get like an alter ego when they're like on set and they can yeah. do it. And I enjoy my job. Yeah. But I lack self confidence and self worth with everything I do, especially my job. I deal with so much rejection. Non stop. Everybody. And then you're, and you've been told pretty much you're not good enough. Yeah. Always. Hard to believe. That you're yeah. Told that, but yeah. You're told you're like, you know, you're fat or, you know. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Like you're fat or. You know, your height and, yeah. you know, you're too sexy or, you know, she's too pretty. Not and sexy enough. It's not like, sexy enough yeah. and she needs to be like, it's just so, and then you just feel like I'm not good enough. Like it yeah. takes a toll. It's so hard. But um, a big thing that came up for me too, it's really, really funny and I'm happy to share this, was the thing that the patterns that I took on the most for, were for my mom and bless her. She's an yeah. amazing woman. Our moms do their best oh as do gosh. our dads. Yeah. They, yeah. they got their patterns from their parents and yeah. so on and so forth. And so, again, they are not their patterns. Right. Um, but uh, my mum and dad divorced when I was quite young. And my brother and I dealt with it in a way. It was like, okay, they didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. Some, you know, er- children deal with, you know, hardship in their life or challenge divorce in different mm. ways. Mm. And I think a therapist told me once, like, it's interesting to see that when your parents divorced, you didn't turn to drugs. You weren't promiscuous. Yeah. You weren't, you know, yeah. You know, failing in school. And he goes, it's just interesting that you just went full to your work, hard work and challenged yourself and just went, went about your life. And I go, As did yeah. your brother, right? Like yeah. he was good too. Yeah. But then I realised that it was also, that could be a problem too. Right. Because there's avoidance. You should have done more drugs, Shanina. Should have. <laughs> well, and going back, to, we'll go back to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, avoidance yeah. maybe in some aspect. Mm. And the biggest issue for me in this life, and I realised where I didn't think it was the issue, mm. was my dad. Yeah. And I'm going to get emotional. Um, it's okay. Let it out. I know. Is abandonment like it's crazy like it came up for me and it's like abandonment I didn't realize where I was bringing on partners in my life where like abandonment was such a thing I'm so independent I'm like everything I do in this life but it was such an issue for me and I did not realize it until I was going through the process and I'm bringing partners in my life where I was yearning for their love um because I haven't healed abandonment through my dad so Yeah, I date my dad too. (laughs) (laughs) Not literally. Not literally. (laughs) But yeah. No, but you do. In so many ways, you tracked it. It's just, it's amazing how it works. Like you don't know that you're doing it, but you are. So. Because you're like, this guy's nothing like my dad. And then all of a sudden you're like. Didn't realize. But then I had to say like, oh shit, no, it is me. I'm attracting it. I'm like, or I'm completely rebelling against it. I'm attracting it because I'm not healing something through when I was a child and it really yearns me like it like for family love connection wanting to feel love by my male partner and so um I would do stupid things like I'm not gonna text them (laughs) playing games like I'm not they should text me they should reach out to me and it's because of like things you're not stubborn Shanina (laughs) I'm not stubborn (laughs) and then come up for me and like where I'm like, I'm deserving of it. They should contact yeah. me. But it's like, well, you are deserving of it. You are deserving. You deserve. You're deserving of communication and anything you do. In you relation. are. But it was but a. Yeah. It's a thing where you do it for not the right reasons, mm. and someone not being present, or you know, it was. It was just everything I was attracting. So I learned that, and I was like, oh, these are the things that I'm bringing on into my relationship. Yeah. Where I can be like, hey, this is my responsibility, mm. and I don't want to do that anymore. Mm. 
um, I can see it and I'm willing to work on it to understand it. Yeah. And, but also love myself yeah. and know that if someone wants to leave me, yeah, they can kick rocks. <laughs> they can kick rocks. And I yeah. have to be okay yeah. with myself yeah. and not feel that problem of abandonment because it sourced from my childhood. And also not feel like, not feeling like if that was just such a hard thing to do, but not feeling like <laughs> um, if they leave, it's tied to your self-worth. Like, oh, yeah. shit, they've left me. I'm not yeah. worth anything. I'm not worth it. You fight for it because yeah. you're yearning for, like, I'm deserving of love. Yeah. Why would you leave me? Like, I'm yeah. the, I'm, I'm a great. Wait, come back. Yeah. I, I don't want to feel this you have way. To, yeah, you have to see me yeah. for who I am because I'm great. Yeah. You need to be there. Yeah. Like, don't you want to be here? Like, yeah. I'm not good enough. You don't care about me. But you if know? they don't, honestly, like, why do we fight for them? Yeah. Let them the fuck go and find somebody. You can't, what are we talking about? And you were talking about this before yeah. and we can probably like move on, but like control. Yes. Control. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, it's just that's like, been huge for me. <laughs> it's a big one for you. Yeah, it is. It's control and having control over yourself, mm -hmm. others. And even like, I think it was crazy. We we're talking about this. It's like asking your partner or whoever it be like, well, you need to do this. It's like, you're trying to control. That's control. It's control. Yep. If they're not, not willing fair. to be open to it, yeah, it's not going to happen. Like you can't force something. It's yeah. not going to work. I think now like if if I'm in a relationship or I'm dating someone, I, I sort of – I think I've learned now to finally look. It's great to express your needs, you know, like, hey, this is like what makes me feel safe or mm. like this is, you know, something that I need in a relationship. Yeah. But if they don't want to do it, that's it. Like you yeah. can't – You can't. You can't like – try to manipulate them into it, try to change them, anything like that. Like you either accept it and live with it. Yeah. Or you move on. Yes. That's it. Like anything else is control. And you can show it by like working on yourself. Yeah. And asking them mm. and being patient. But there's only so much you can do. Yeah. And also like. The patience runs out. <laughs> patience runs out. And it needs to they run They have out. to want, they have to, what is that saying? Like leading a horse to water. <laughs> oh, you can lead a, a horse, horse to water, water but, but you know. Don't drown it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, that's think, that's how, that's I don't think that's how it goes. But they want. But yes. They have to drink. <laughs> the horse has to wants to drink. Yes, but what? you can't make them drink. Yeah, yes. that's it. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just made up my own version. That's it. Yeah, but yeah. don't drown them. <laughs> yeah, but don't drown it. No, but a um, control. Yeah, that's yeah. another thing. You can only talk about your experience, your responsibility. Yeah, and hope. You know, I guess hope, but also just be open to the person and understand them and what they're going through. Yeah. But um, you can't force anything. And no. You can't control anything. And going about control, mm. you want to talk about our favorite thing? Yeah. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, so the other the other healing modality um, that Shanina and I uh, we love and we're very grateful to have in our lives is um, ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. but we we generally sit with ayahuasca in a little bit of a different way. It's called changa. Um, I'll just explain what ayahuasca is for anybody who's not sure. So ayahuasca is an ancient plant medicine um, that uh, people in other cultures have been using for at least hundreds so if not thousands years. of years. Don't quote me on that. Um, but basically it's a very strong psychedelic medicine and I say medicine not drug because when mm -hmm. you do it it's not addictive no you don't want to like go home and kick your feet up on the couch and like kick back with some ayahuasca it's definitely not like that I wouldn't advise it. yeah yeah kind of the opposite of that actually yeah um but it, it is it is a medicine because it's like when you sit with it 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 shows you what you need not mm -hmm. what you want mm -hmm. um and it's not uh it's it's just like a lifetime of therapy in one go. Like that's mm -hmm. kind of how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very spiritual. It presents as feminine generally. Um, so it's a very feminine medicine. Yeah. Uh, like when you sit with ayahuasca, you generally uh, you generally meet the mother. Um, I, and people are going to ask who the hell? <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> the sounds mother. In, this sounds insane. Um, yeah. But she she is um, she's I guess like. The universe, God, the mother, like I think it's all the same thing. Yeah. Like, that's how that's it kind of presents to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very nurturing experience. 
even when it's bloody hard and sometimes you'll sit with it and mm. it's like the most horrifying experience you've ever been through. And you've done ayahuasca before. So I does have. it differ from what we've done together? Which is what changa. It, changa. So the difference between ayahuasca and changa is when you sit with ayahuasca in ceremony, um, they, ayahuasca comes in kind of like a tea form, mm-hmm. which is sort of like hot molasses. Ew. Yeah, it's it's not the nicest thing to drink. Like I said, it's not kicking your cou- your feet up on the couch. <laughs> yeah, and then like you need to really prep for that. It's um, like a cleanse before. Yeah, right? you need to go on what's called a dieta, which is um, I think like you you generally like you slowly kind of take things out of your diet. Mm. So you know you'll start out eating like a very clean like protein based diet with some like fruits and rice and that kind of thing, and then over the week or two weeks, I can't remember how long the cleanse is because it, it was a few years ago that I did it, um, you eventually uh, bring that down to nothing. Mm-hmm. So, like, you might eat fruit, like, the day before and then, like, 24 hours before you sit with Aya, it's just water. Wow. So you've got nothing in your stomach. So you're feeling that. Yeah, and the reason you want nothing in your stomach when you sit with the um, with the drink form is because generally you throw up a lot. It mm-hmm. doesn't happen to everybody. Yes. Definitely happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it can also go the other way too. <laughs> so, can it really? Yes, which is one of my major fears when I did it the first time. I was like, so you'll be in like in a room and then you're like, I have to go to the bathroom or like. Uh, let me tell you. Oh no. I, Ooh. okay, so th- this is this is funny. I was so afraid of that happening. You wore a diaper? I wore a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I did because I was like, I'm in sweatpants anyway. Who yeah. the hell is going to know? So I put an adult diaper on, put my sweatpants on. <laughs> And then I was like, yeah, I've hacked this, you know. And I had a couple of spare diapers and some wipes in my bag because, like, my worst nightmare was, like, holy, holy (laughs) shit. No pun intended. I (laughs) Holy (laughs) shit. Holy shit. I I could be, like, balls deep in a psychedelic trip here, like, not knowing, you know, not knowing up from down, shit myself, and then, you know, (laughs) And then have to like clean myself off while I'm like balls deep in this trip. I don't want that to happen. If I've got if I've got a diaper, I can just like swap it out. Are you able to clean yourself when you're like in that? Oh God, in no. that I couldn't. form, I couldn't have. No. So so yeah, but as as it turned out, um, that didn't happen to me. Mm-hmm. But boy, did I puke a lot. Holy yeah. crap! Like I and I now know that that was because. I really needed to purge. Mm. Like I did, I sat with ayahuasca um, not long after I lost my stepfather yeah. suddenly. Um, it actually happened while I at was your wedding. married, yeah. Yeah. Um, he had a really terrible fall, uh, fell backwards, got a catastrophic brain injury mm. and he was with us one second gone the next, you know, like just mm-hmm. so shocking. Mm. Everybody in the family was fucking devastated i still i'm still devastated yeah like years yeah. later it's hard it's awful i miss him every day um but yeah so that oh god now i'm crying what the <laughs> hell <laughs> um so that's what that's what made me want to sit with ayahuasca and i was also going through like a really bad time with work as well like so was ayahuasca re- was calling you to like yeah, well, figure some that's things the funniest out thing. It, it wasn't calling me and then it was mm. um It was nothing I'd ever considered. And it was funny because I dated a guy who did it quite frequently. And even when he was doing it, I was like, no, it's not my bag. Like, I don't (laughs) want to, whoa, that sounds like really intense. I never want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because he told me it was some of the hardest, you know, some of the hardest things he tripped or sort of experiences he'd ever been through. Mm. Um, But, yeah, I had a friend reach out to me whom I'd been friends with and now you know Mm -hmm. um, for since I was 15 years old, like yeah. one of my oldest friends. Yes. And he said to me, um, hey, because I was telling him what was going on. He's like, how are you? And this person's very intuitive. Mm-hmm. And he said, hey, I think you should do ayahuasca. And I'm like, oh, so what? And he's <laughs> like, I think you should do ayahuasca. Um, I'm actually doing it tonight. I was like, oh, wow. Have oh. you done it before? He's like, yeah, about 30 times. Oh, gosh. I'm like. I did not know this about you. Mm. And I remember thinking, like, this is somebody I spoke to every day who had never told me that they'd done ayahuasca like yeah. 30 times. Wow. And yet at this exact moment in my life knew that that was something I really needed. And at the time I was actually sitting on my couch in L.A. next to my mother who had come over to L.A. to, like, get out of Melbourne and grieve. Yeah. Um, and I told her about it expecting her to go, fuck no, I don't want you doing that. And mm. she goes, 
I think you really need this. Oh, wow. And so I was like, whoa, like he's telling me this. My mom's telling me to go do it. Like, this is, I'm getting the call that they talk about. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, I wasn't afraid anymore. I was like, okay, I, you know, it's not to say I didn't get really nervous beforehand. I did, but like. Yeah, I would be nervous. I was terrified before I did it. Um, but yeah, so I started the prep for it and they say you have to go do it in the jungles of Peru. I did it in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you now Peru, that i Peru, Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, like a little bit of a contrast there. Now that I've done it. But you um, need a shaman as well. Like it's important. Just, like you just can't like go to the ayahuasca tree and put it up uh, in. I mean, it's funny. Now that now that we do changa instead of aya, um, and I'll explain the difference in a second, I don't really feel like you need a shaman for that mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. I sort of feel like I don't know sometimes I'd be careful with who your shamans are there are some great ones out there and then there's some there are some tourist traps with this stuff so just, yeah, just be is. very careful and do your research yeah um but yeah so in this in this particular situation um I was actually sitting with the person who who brought the idea to me and a few other people that I knew mm-hmm. so I felt very comfortable in that situation I also don't feel like now that I've done it enough I don't really feel like you need to go to Peru or anything like that. If you want to go there to have the full-on spiritual traditional experience, mm. by all means, awesome. Yes. Um, but like you you leave your body, you go eight u- universes away. It doesn't matter if you're in your bedroom, a dance hall in Brooklyn or yeah. in Peru, you're going to meet the mother <laughs> and and the mother doesn't care. She'll she'll come find you. Yeah. So so yeah, I so this experience was I walked into this dance hall. Um and my friend who invited me to do it had already two people on either side of him. Okay. And I remember walking in going, ah, huh, he doesn't want me to sit next to him. Oh, really? And then I thought, oh, I know why. Because he doesn't want me to ask for his help. Because hmm. he's super intuitive. And I just like, I just thought, yeah, if I sit next to him and shit gets real, I will try to cling to him. Yes. And I knew that – and I did ask him afterwards and he's like, yeah, that's yeah. why. I Like he's like, I knew you were going to have a rough one. Oh. So I went and sat between two people I didn't know. Okay. One of them was an ER doctor from oh. New York. Okay. Good and, spot. <laughs> yeah. and the uh, Which was great. <laughs> yeah. Good parking spot. Yeah, great parking spot. And then uh, on the other side was a psychic. Mm. Couldn't have had two more different people. Um, but I, I turned, it turned out to be perfect yeah. because my friend was right. I was in for like the most almighty experience of my life. Mm. Um, uh, most people, so basically the, the shaman goes around the circle mm-hmm. when you drink yeah. and like each person takes it in turn, to, takes a turn to leave their mat, go and sit in front of the shaman. The shaman like does a little ceremony with you and then you drink the, the hot molasses ayahuasca and then you go back to your mat and you sit there okay and let most people in the circle drank twice Mm -hmm. I needed to purge so badly that I was already going "Mm -hmm," as I'm walking back to the mat no yeah it just was like coming up straight away and I remember I sat back on the mat and they told us to sit up against the wall okay um and I was just sucked back into the wall And, like, all of a sudden I'm having this, like, crazy psychedelic experience and, like, I didn't know where I was. And, like, it was very beautiful and cool at that point. Like, it was it was not scary. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, But then I remember my first demon came up. And uh, I (laughs) recognised – because, to be honest, like, I thought – because I had a similar childhood to you in a lot of ways. Yeah. um, With, with, you know, a dad that's – a bit emotionally, a good guy, but like emotionally unavailable. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought a lot of my trip would be about him. Mm. He was the first one I threw up. Oh, wow. Didn't even go there. Like, (laughs) Like, just like, (laughs) all of a sudden needed to throw up. It presented as an actual demon to me. And I grabbed the bucket because they give you a bucket, threw him up straight away. Mm -hmm. Um, And then uh, I just like kept throwing up. I don't know why the number 17 comes into my head, but I think I threw up 17 times. That's interesting. Maybe I was like subconsciously counting. I don't know. Or maybe it's complete bullshit and I threw up five times. I don't know. But I think yeah. it's 17. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, my, my trip was super psychedelic. I remember keeping my eyes closed the whole time and I think I did that out of fear of like what if I open them and nothing changes. At one point I did open them and nothing changed. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was like, because I remember I, I went like, it kept going deeper and darker and deeper and darker. And at one point I went to hell and I could feel the, the heat off the flames no. from the fire. Oh boy. And, um, and I remember I started speaking in tongues at one point, like, and the shaman came over and he like started yelling at me, you know, what's your name? Tell me your name. Um, you I don't know, like this. Like, <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> yeah, but like it ended up amazing. Yeah. So why was he yelling at you? Well, because there was a demon stuck in me. Like oh. I was kind of possessed, I guess. Oh gosh. Get but it then out. I threw up, and I remember turning around to the shaman, going, "I'm, but it's it's gone. I'm fine. Like I'm back." Yeah. Um, it actually got so intense and vocal and physical for me that they took me to another room. <laughs> She's got to... Yeah. It sound, like, makes it sound so terrifying and yet I do it all the time now. She's got us a wild one. Yeah, so it was a wild one. And um, they actually, they were, they were really nurturing this crew that we did it with. And yeah. the doctor next to me was helping me the whole way through. He was like... Oh, good. He was like with it enough to help me and he was being really, really kind and like helping me drink water. And they 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 have a couple of minders there and and one of the minders sat there and like held me up because I got really weak and couldn't hold myself up mm. and she was feeding me ginger tea and that was starting to settle my stomach which was good um but while this is happening are you still like in a high oh yeah yeah I was in it for like four hours <laughs> and know. it can go for longer than that too but oh, like boy. it was but it was it was amazing because like somebody gave me Somebody gave me two pieces of advice before I did it. The first one was no matter what, let go. Mm. Like do not try to control this. It will get worse because it does. Like until you actually let go, yeah. it's kind of like the visions get worse and harder and harder mm. um, until you actually let go. The other piece of advice mm -hmm. um, that our friend McCart actually told me because he, he does a lot of ayahuasca, yeah. he told me um, – Ask the ayahuasca for help. Ask the mother for help, mm. which is something I do a lot now. Yeah. And I remember, I think my my whole experience this time was like was hard because I asked the mother early on. I was like, Mother Ayahuasca, I don't know why I like I said it like this, but I did. Mother Ayahuasca, you're my teacher, I'm your child, show me the way, or something like that. Mm. And she appeared. Wow. And it's funny because I'd never Googled what Mother Ayahuasca looks like and I did afterwards and well, let me tell you it was the same. Really? Yeah, which was amazing. And she kind of took me by the hand and led me through the whole thing and it got deeper and darker and deeper and darker but she was there the whole time. So that's what I say when I'm, when I'm talking about it being a very nurturing experience even when it's hard. Yeah. Like you feel very supported. Mm. Um, I went through ego deaths, like I felt like I was dying, like all sorts of things. The craziest thing that happened to me mm. during this ayahuasca trip was this. So I was taken – actually, there's two crazy things. Okay. So I was taken to the other room by two minders. But my memory is six people taking me to the other room. Okay. And I, I think I knew that the other four that were there were spirits. Didn't scare me. But like it's but you see spirits. Sometimes. Yeah, I know. I see ghosts. So yeah, yeah. you know, that yeah. that's why it didn't scare me. Yeah. Here's the crazy part. Afterwards, I was talking to the doctor next to me. Okay. And he said to me, When you were being taken to the other room, there was four spirits walking with the the minders and he described them to me. Ooh. ooh, ooh. So what? I was like, What? They were there. Oh like that's how? crazy, you know? What do they look like? Oh, uh, like kind of normal people I think like I don't even I don't know who they were like they were just like but they were but he saw them too he saw them too and he described what they were wearing and everything wow yeah so so that was freaky um but cool and then in the other so when I was in the other room I was sitting with one of the minders and I was mm. kind of like sitting up against her like she was like behind me sort of cradling me and so yeah like like with, behind me like yeah. feeding me tea right okay and I was starting to come out of it a little bit. So it was like towards, I'd thrown up a lot. That had sort of stopped, I think, at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember prior to doing ayahuasca, I had a crazy fear of childbirth. Like I was telling people, I don't want kids yeah. ever yeah. in my life, um, which isn't true. I would love to be a mother one day. Yeah. But like I, I was telling people I didn't want that just because I had this subconscious fear that I wasn't aware of of childbirth. Yes. Um, so I I started to go through these rebirths and I went through three of them. 
the first one was this feeling of me going through my own birth again, mm-hmm. which was actually a traumatic birth. Wow, yeah. So I was born breech. Yeah. Um, this is this actually happened. I was born breech, but my legs were like up against my chest. So I was born butt first. <laughs> yep. And uh, my poor mother, oh my God, Oof. it was like, it was too late to have a C-section by the time I was halfway out. So they had to pull me out with forceps. Yeah. But um, my, because... When a baby's skin hits the air, that's what triggers them to take a breath, right? There's like a little clock that starts and then the baby takes a breath. Okay. Because my butt hit the air first, I took a breath. So I drowned in my mother's amniotic fluid and meconium. Yes. That my first... My first breath was my own shit. Um, and so <laughs> She's full of shit. Yeah, my, I've been full of shit from the start. Um, so, so by the time they got me out, I wasn't crying. Mm. I was drowning. Oh, gosh. So they had to, uh, which was apparently terrifying my, for my mother. I can only imagine. I can, yeah. Yeah, so they, so they had to resuscitate me. Um, but I've carried that trauma since I was born and mm-hmm. that is where the ayahuasca showed me that is where my fear of giving birth came from. Wow. How insane is that? Yeah, that makes sense. I also saw other stuff from when I was in utero that affected me. And that's me. why you always have like a vision of fear of drowning and yes, all the time. Suffocating, drowning, yeah. all that all came time. from that. So, so I went through this rebirth. Then I went through a second rebirth, which was me being born, but it was normal. Mm. So like I came out. Doctor slapped me on the ass, took a breath or, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. Then the third rebirth I went through Mm -hmm. was crazy because it was me giving birth. Wow. To myself. Oh. Don't know how I did that. Pretty talented. But anyway. (laughs) so (laughs) That's a skill. Yeah. So I gave birth to myself, but it was the most psychedelic, crazy, like, godly, most incredible experience ever. And I remember I started crying because I was Mm. like... Oh my God, women are the most fucking cool thing ever. Like, yeah. Women are goddesses. Superhumans. Giving birth and having children is like our highest purpose and the most beautiful thing we can do. And mm-hmm. holy shit, yes, this is something I want. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad. Yeah. You want to know the really crazy part? And this is getting a little bit graphic, but like, you know, you guys are adults, you can deal with it. <laughs> so remember how I had that adult diaper on? <laughs> Yeah. I'm glad I did because when I went, to the, <laughs> I went to the bathroom afterwards to pee and I had, at the time I was on birth control so I wasn't getting periods. Uh-huh. I went to the bathroom. I had bled everywhere. That is, that is actually freaky. Yeah. My body thought I was in labor. That is freaky. Yeah. Because I didn't bleed afterwards. Yeah, you ha- was not bleeding before. I just bled. And I can't talk for Georgia but she's – been on birth control for 20 years 20 years yeah so I'm off it crazy. now thank god but yeah like I was on it for 20 years um uh, not because I was you know sexually active from when I was a child but, like, <laughs> but I was put on it um to manage the symptoms of what I now know was my brain tumor yes um and you know in some ways that was good because it probably stopped me from getting osteoporosis but like it also really fucked That's up my crazy. hormones like I I there's a there was a lot of negatives as well, which is why in the end I decided to go off it and take more of a holistic approach. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, at the time I was on it. Had that this, happened. Had this bleed. So that's insane. That's how powerful, how powerful this medicine is. Yeah. So after that experience, because that was such a, an extreme experience, I actually spent the second half of my ayahuasca sitting praying for the courage to do it again because I knew I'd received so much healing from it. Wow. Well, yeah. But I'll be honest, I was shit scared of doing it again. Like I I really, it was so hard that I just, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it in like six months. And then six months would go by and I was like, I'll do it in six months. You know, like I was just Maybe it hasn't called for you to do it again. I think it was calling. I was just terrified. I think it was just dumb. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, doesn't sound like. Yeah. It sounds amazing, but it also sounds like something I don't want to do. If, look. You no, I but I did it. But I did it. You did do it, and yeah. like now that now that I'm doing it the other way, which it's a is different the changa, way. Yeah. Um, I've also had experiences that deep and dark on the changa. Mm. Um, and I'm so grateful for every one of those experiences. And I think now I could sit with it again, but I also just really enjoy doing it the yeah. other way. So like, I'm probably, I may not ever drink it again. Mm. Um, so the difference between ayahuasca and changa. 
Yes. Ayahuasca is like the tea that's like molasses. Changa is exactly the same thing, but you dry it's dried out mm-hmm. and you smoke it through a pipe. Yeah. So it's um, it lasts, you know, the ayahuasca would last for about, you know, four to 12 hours depending oh on how boy. much you drink. Um, the changa lasts for six minutes roughly, six, six to 15 minutes depending on how big 15? you I can. Wasn't, I wasn't in it for 15. No, we were in it for about six minutes. If you take a heroic dose of it, you might be in 15. But oh, um, I'm good. But, yeah, it's it's very strong, very powerful. Yeah. Um, I I never thought I would ever do no. anything like this I ever in my life. But at the all. same person who called me <laughs> suggested to you. Yeah, exactly. They're like, well, she did what? Yeah. Um, yeah, the same person that called Georgia is the same person that, you know, gave me my first experience. Yeah. Yep. Of ayahuasca or chunga should I say at a time when you really needed it as well yeah it was then this was after Hoffman so I was in a great place and I felt I was dealing with little things here just talking about things but very open but feeling good about myself yeah and secure within myself and who I was yeah but then I was you know very open and talking about um other issues and they're like, why don't we just, you know, do yeah. some chunga? And I was like, you know what? I'm feeling good about myself. I, I'm like, I'm ready. I can do that. I'm like, what else do you need to show? I've done a lot of healing. Yeah. So I was like, maybe there's something else I need to pick up or like figure out. So I'm interested to like lean into it to see. Yeah. Um, I was a bit scared, but I wasn't terrified. I'd be, I was you very know what? Confident. I would be shocked if you weren't scared because it's yeah, a psychedelic. It's the and unknown. You have, yeah, it's the unknown. And you're exactly. not control. And yeah. I like to be somewhat in control. Like, I think we've all done like mushrooms before and I'm like, oh, yeah. you know. I actually find like I'm less in control with mushrooms. Yeah, but me too. Like, I don't know if I'm much, you know, but it's, yeah. you know, it's funny and it makes you laugh and I love it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, so uh, at the time I had a sore throat too. So yeah. It was kind of rough for you to it do that. It was rough. Night. I couldn't like really um, inhale it as such. Um, but um, the setup, it's like dark. We was in now like in a living room. Yeah, you can do it any time of day though. You can do you it do, during the day. You can do it any time of the day. Yeah. In the living room, it's dark. Um, the music really helps. That's important. So the, the music, music actually, um, I mean, when you sit with a shaman, they will play music. So like with instruments mm. um, and the music really guides you through the trip. Yes. Like really sort of guides you, manipulates it a little bit, but mm. in an important way. Um, when we sit with Chunga, we just have a playlist that mm-hmm. um, has some songs that if you listen to them sober, you'd probably be like, yeah. 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 But when you're listening and you're you're and you you've consumed the Chunga, it all makes sense. It's, yeah, and it's it all happens in the right order. Um, but yeah, the other the other thing with difference between Chunga and actually drinking the ayahuasca is you don't need to prep as much. Mm-hmm. Like you can eat normal food and you know I think I've even done it after a glass of wine like to be yeah. honest probably shouldn't but I have yeah um but the only thing you can't do and this is important um is if you really are important. on any SSRIs so any antidepressants you cannot you yeah. cannot use ayahuasca or changa the other thing I did before I sat before I drank it is well I actually called my doctor yeah important yeah. I think that's really important yeah you do these things so you're in like in a safe environment and you know yeah. what you're intaking in, in your body. So. I was nervous about that call. My yeah. doctor's a cool guy in San Francisco though. I call him, you know, they're all, they're all a little bit like edgy up there. Yeah. Called him and I was like, hey, um, so I'm going to do this ayahuasca trip, uh, you know, any, any, anything I should look out for. And he's like, well, on the record, as your doctor, Georgia, it's a strong psychedelic. You should be very careful. Off the record, that's so cool. Good for you. Um, these, are, <laughs> these are, you know, these yeah. these are the things to look out for. That's important. Make sure you're super hydrated. You're not on an, on S, any SSRIs. I would stop taking, you know, because I was on, I think at the time, spironolactone for my skin. He's like, take stop taking that a few days before. Like, make sure you got none of that in your system just to be safe, and yeah. then you should be good. Okay. Yeah. But I would tell everybody before you do this, please check in with your doctor. Uh, yeah, I think that's a safety yeah um, measure to t- uh, take upon yourself. <laughs> right, but yeah. So the chunga. So yeah, you did the chunga. What was your first experience like? I did the chunga, and I was surprised I did it myself. Um, and as soon as you close, we smoke. I had obviously again, I had really a bad throat, so you inhale it, but when you smoke it, you have to 
hold it in. Yes. Absorb it. You can't yes. smoke it out. It's very, very hard, especially with a sore throat. Yeah. So it was like, oh, yeah, it was like, ow, Because it's like pure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, hold it in, you breathe it in as you slowly and the music's going. And then literally as you close your eyes, it's just psychedelic images and things you would just you couldn't even like uh like I wish I could like sit there and draw it's yeah. just insane what you see yeah um but with that sometimes it depends on how deep you go because it's sometimes it's like okay this is just cool yeah. psychedelic images I was like but I think if you read into it and ask and I think what we've learned too is like before going in is asking what we want to achieve be or what, specific, yeah, yeah be specific or yeah the answers that we need or what mm. do I need you know what do I need to see yeah um I need your guidance, whatever it may be. And then um, I closed my eyes and it was interesting. It was not negative or positive. It was probably had a lot of pointing fingers at me. And it's yeah. not, and it's weird because it doesn't come in like how we look at each other right now. Mm. It comes in a psychedelic form, like visuals like that. Yeah. For me. Yeah. For me too. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and it was kind of weird because people, it was people, it's like weird. When you yeah. just like, I guess it's like the other side. It was like people were like, oh, like what is she doing here? Yeah. <laughs> and like looking at me and pointing at me. But I think there was something to it with a fear of mine okay. as well, where people like just kept pointing, you know, fingers at me and looking at me. Uh, what do you think that was about? Why do you think you saw that vision? I get anxi anxiety, I think, for being like a lot of people looking and I'm like, what's going on? Or like, there's something so wrong with me. With and what staring. we've chosen career wise. Yeah, yeah, career wise, it's yeah. just like, well, your dumb choice but <laughs> <laughs> well maybe it's not maybe you're no. stepping into your fear yeah stepping into my fear yeah. and something with anxiety that brings it you know and just not being maybe myself sometimes mm. or fear I, I think throughout my career everyone's seen me through the lens of a camera yes and as a still shot and very very little video of me you know yeah. it, but no one's got to see my personality yes. so maybe I'm going into a new step of showing myself and my true authentic self and talking and yeah. seeing my personality and maybe have a fear of that where people are just looking at me and maybe not like me and that's what I need to get out of my head. Right. And this and was I look right before we started season one too, wasn't it? Like right before you were about to start doing this, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we were, or we just were like in between. Or maybe we'd filmed we but filmed. we hadn't put it I think it we out filmed, yet. yeah, there was just other things. So it was interesting that I saw that. Um, like and I saw like other things about my future, you know, mm. and it's – it sticks out to me quite a bit. Mm. But then um, recently uh, we're in the house. Yeah, we did it. This is two days ago. <laughs> yeah, two days ago from yeah. when we're talking to you right now. Yeah. And we were like, let's get some answers. I needed some answers. I was yeah. going through a we really – Both of us were just like, I need to understand this. I was going mm. through a rough spot. And the anxiety, the sadness, so like just like the tough – feeling that I had inside my body when I, I think it was the second time like we smoked. Mm. So the first time we're like, oh, let's just see a little bit. Sometimes you don't go so deep. Yeah. Because it's very Both of us strong. had this. Yeah, it's very strong. Yeah. So we want, to be, we want to be careful and smart. Yeah. But the second time we did it together, we went so deep and it was mm. the most beautiful experience and visuals I've had mm. from Changa ever. Like I got so emotional mm. in it and it was just – so bright and so happy and the evolution of what I was seeing in it and it brought me so much peace mm. and it's so funny because I found something out today and I don't want to keep crying guys but it's just it's, cry no yes. it's okay We're all friends. But I don't want to cry but it's just interesting <laughs> what I found out today how that it connects with what I saw yeah. and it's crazy but it's what I needed it's definitely what I needed and it was so beautiful. And after I like I came out of it, I said to George, I was like, this is like it like the release yeah. of what I was just feeling, it's gone. Yep. It's gone and I understand it and it doesn't even matter. No. None of this crap matters. And <laughs> like, at last, it's the not stress, like stress, the negativity, yeah. it doesn't matter in this life. It's just like it's gonna be okay. You're supported. The world is not against you. It's just, it's really not. And it's hard to say, like, I feel like when I did that, it's like the world is not against us. Yeah. We're so loved. We're so supported. We come into this world as love. Yeah. Um, and it allowed me just to let go. And I think we both had the experiences. Like, I think I had, like, a bad shoulder. The first time I had, like, a bad yes. hip or whatever it is. It releases it immediately. Yep. And I'm not lying. It's crazy. Yeah, you come out. And by the way, this is how it works when you consume the changa is – 
you what you'll do a hit of it and it lasts roughly six minutes and then if you want to go deeper um you do it again yeah and like i'll do anywhere from like two to ten hits of it in in a session depending on like where i feel like i need to go because mm-hmm. sometimes you'll get into it and you'll be doing such deep work that you'll think i've just got to keep going i have to resolve this i've got to work through it yeah and then sometimes for us the other day we did it we did it three well, times three times uh, and then we were like we felt like we'd worked through what we needed to work through and we yeah. got out of it what we needed to get out of it yeah but i was like that was too quick like i feel like we've got to do another one and then we did another one and that mm-hmm. showed us no, like you've resolved it. We That's resolved it. it. Yeah. yeah. That's all we needed to see. Yeah. And it's it's kind of, it's so crazy because like every single time I've done Changa, I have any of the um, lessons that I've uh, experienced during the trip, they've stayed with me. Like yeah. It really does rewire your neural pathways. It does. In a good way. It does. Like I don't, like any, like I still feel that, the, the thing that I went through the other day, I still feel like that's cleared. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, did, I didn't wake up the next day and like was, you know, upset again or whatever. It's gone. It's done. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. It's it's left but I have an understanding of it. And I think for the first time, it's like our last session when we did like last time and George has always talked about this and I'm like, I don't want to deal with that. Like is it the near like death experience? Like yes. you go through past lives and I'm like, I don't want to die. Like yeah. Oh, no. And this is all like very, for me, if I look back on my old self and that, if I told my old self, oh, you're going to do Chunga, but like, oh, you, it's very hippy dippy, crazy. Yeah. No, people look at me like <laughs> so I'm insane like, when yeah, I tell them. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. But yeah. I had um, a lot of visuals, mm. psychedelic visuals, but I had more feeling mm. into the session and I had a near death experience. What did it feel like? For the first time. And it felt so peaceful. And it's just like you're so by yourself and it's the feeling is that's what's going to happen, right? Yeah. But it felt so peaceful and like nothing mattered. Yeah. And it's the weirdest thing. And it was like I was so at peace um, and that was really, really weird. And yeah. I was like, holy crap, I think this is this is what it is. Yeah. And it's okay. Yeah. And Georgia asked me, she was like, well, yeah, exactly what you asked. She's like, were you scared? I'm like, no, I wasn't. And some people are. They're like, yeah. oh, crap. Like, yeah. And then even when a moment when I was going through a visual and I was seeing something that was really important to me, I started having tears in my eyes. Like I was crying. Like it's it was beautiful, but it was just like release because it's it's painful in some way. Mm. But then I had someone, people were like, don't cry, don't cry. Like people doing that. It's just the weirdest thing. I can't explain it, but people were like, no, 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 don't cry. Yeah, like it's and not it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah people were like. And it's weird and when I say again, people, mm. it was just someone saying, don't do it. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. And then I'm like getting the strength again because it's like they want me to see yeah. something that I need to see. Yeah. So, You know yeah. what I think would have happened if you were just from, from my own experience in the past because this happened to me. Mm. If you had shown up with fear when you were faced with death, probably would have gone really dark for you. Yeah. Because until you released control, yes. until you accepted it, until you moved through it. Mm-hmm. But I think you were just like maybe feeling so euphoric from the one you'd just done, mm. that like the, the previous hit that you'd just taken, mm. that you were just like, no, I'm just going to give in. And because you gave in straight away, you saw that it, it's peace. Yeah. I think sometimes like when I go through it, it's like there's like, was like darker images. Mm. But I'm like. I say to myself, because you're able, you're in control of yourself still. And you're like, yeah. I know. I'm like, you're conscious. I, yeah. You're conscious. And I was like you're in control of it in some aspect, but not. But I was like, I just want to see what I need to see. Yeah, give into it. Yeah, give into yeah. it. I'm like, okay, and that's all right. And I'm like, I feel, but I think I must say, if I did this before Hoffman, I think I would have seen a lot of dark images. So I many agree. things I didn't want to heal or like, I sorry, I had to heal. It would have been a different experience. Mm. I agree with that. I think because you, yes. Yeah, I think you would have tried to control it. I think you would have like been you know fearful and just scared but also there is things that I had to heal Mm. and go through and understand so Mm. um yeah no I I don't do it all the time obviously when when I feel like I really yeah need it so go through it calls but um yeah it's that was a different experience for me and I'm surprised I've done it but it's not bad honestly it's like it's most amazing like it sounds crazy but like it, it is the most amazing tool Mm. once you learn about it and 
um, you know, once once you experience it, it's just like I understand why other people are like, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, when mm -hmm. I talk about it. Yeah. Also, I don't really think I was that person. Yeah. Like you crazy lady. I like, know. I don't girl, really feel like you and I <laughs> like fit the archetype of somebody yeah. who would do ayahuasca, you know, from yeah. the outside. So when people find out that like I've done it a few times, they're like really? My God, you're like that person? I'm like, I don't know what that person is. Yeah. It's just like such an amazing tool mm -hmm. to heal. And, I, and I've and i had a lot of benefit from it. And, you know, if you're open to it or if it ever calls you, mm -hmm. you know, I think you should do it. I would never, though, push it on to someone. Like, no. I don't – I really do believe you have to let this medicine call you. Yeah. And you're not ready until all of a sudden one day you are ready when it calls you. Yeah. And so if you're feeling resistance right now listening to this – it's not your time, baby. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't my time. George is so many times like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. And yeah. I'm like, it's not happening. It's yeah. not going to happen. And that was my mindset. It's like, yeah. it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And then when it happened, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I think I'm ready. Yeah, You're I'm ready, okay. Yeah. yeah. I never thought that, you know, and you've spoken to people that know me. Yeah. And they were shocked. They're like, she like, did. Sorry, what? Yeah, she did what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But me too. Like, yeah. people were like, huh? Mm -hmm. When I did it as well. So. Yeah. I'm so we've a had a lot of healing yes. last year. It yeah. was a lot of growth. Yeah. I think, yeah. yeah, we went through it. We deep dived into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we're ready for a whole new brand new year. And I think it's going to be a great year. Yeah, I do too, honestly. And I'm really excited for, for what we're doing with this brand. Yes. You know, like right now it's just a podcast. But Shanina and I, you know, we have plans to... What was that cartoon, Pinky and the Brain? We're gonna oh, yeah. take over the world. <laughs> um, no, but like we do want to expand this into more of a wellness platform and and introduce other things. And we're we're super excited for you guys to come along for the ride. Yes, so much to learn. Yep, yeah. And like my favorite thing about eighty twenty, mm. I'm gonna ask you what yours is. In okay. A minute. <laughs> my favorite thing about eighty twenty is exactly what you just said learning mm -hmm. from so many of the best people yeah you know what I mean like I feel like every time we sit with someone on the couch um, my mind is just blown in some way yeah and I take that away and it gets incorporated into my life yes I love it it's what's your favorite thing took the words out of my mouth it is it's for me it's I feel like I know th so much and I'm very privileged um with my career and being attached to so many amazing people and experts whatever it may be but it brings me so much joy because I'm learning with all of you, like our guests as well. Yeah. And it brings me strength, guidance, support, um, knowledge, and knowledge is power and it just yep. whatever works for you. So, And it creates a better me. Um, so yeah. that's what I love about it. And I enjoy, I really love helping other people yeah. and taking care of other people. Yeah. So knowing that, you know, the podcast and also that we're building – 80, 20 into a brand, um, that it's going to be beneficial and helpful for others. That also brings me joy because there's nothing better when I've done like talks, you know, with health and wellness, well, health and wellness experts and people come up to me and they're like, thank you, Shanina, for doing yes. this. I learned so much and I can't wait for this or whatever it may be. It, it brings me joy. It makes me feel good because, you know, I'm on the same page as them as well. Yeah. Well, I couldn't be more excited to be building this with my best friend. Got me into tears. I well. love you. I, I love 8020. I love you. This sounds corny, but I love you. I do. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're excited for 2024. Oh my God, I almost said 2023. No, it's 24, <laughs> baby. It's oh, an even number. Time flies too quickly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, something I wanted to say before we wind the episode up is just to recap like, remember, this brand was born from a period in both of our lives mm. where we were going through some shit. <laughs> so if that's you right now, yeah, I promise you there's an opportunity in there. There's an mm -hmm. opportunity to grow in some way. So just please focus on that. Figure out what that is for you because it will all turn around in the most magical way and you will end up with your own version of happiness or fulfillment mm -hmm. no matter what that is. Yeah. So. Deep dive into it. Feel it. Yep. Mm. Love it. Love it. See you guys Bye. soon. Woohoo. <laughs>